Hey everybody, this is this is Javi, and you are listening to the Inner Child Collective Podcast, where you and your inner child heal for the better. Welcome, welcome, and what's good? Um, this is the second episode of this podcast, and for those who are just tuning in, I'm a psychic, intuitive medium, and author who uses divination and storytelling to help people overcome generational trauma, and one way I do that is... Um, by tapping into inner child energy and giving messages. So I talk about that on the first episode. So be sure to check that out and listen. Um, this is um, for the, this, the, this episode is actually for, you know, December 16th, 2019. I cannot believe that we are um, close to January. Like, right? Time goes by very quickly, I noticed. Um, but I digress. Anyway, <laughs> um, from this episode on, I am doing inner child energy messages for the collective. And that means I'm calling upon uh, my entire spirit squad to tap into the mind, body, and spirit of those who are meant to resonate with the messages received. Um, I'll be providing tools and tips along the way as well. And um, just to give you a little bit of a format of uh, as far as how I do things, um, throughout the entire reading, I'm going to be using cards. That's my divination of choice for this uh, for this podcast is tarot and oracle decks, right? So um, for this episode and many episodes, um, unless something changes, I'll be using the following cards. So. Um, the archetype cards um, are going to, going to. I have a beautiful archetype card deck here, and I'm going to be using those to determine what archetype represents the listener. Um, I'm also going to be using the modern spellcasters tarot deck to tell the listener's story. Basically, talk about the the your inner child, your your childhood, your teenage years, um, and your adulthood, and what is basically holding you back and what can you do to connect you know to your inner child um and also lastly um i am going to be using the mythical shaman oracle deck to give you words of encouragement because sometimes i'm gonna be honest with you the shit's heavy like the readings and the messages that come through um and that resonate with some of that stuff's heavy so um I just I always end it with a word of encouragement um so people can be uplifted. Okay? So uh yeah, that's how I roll. That's how it is. And I use that format um on videos. Like the, I use those cards in the format that you know that I'm going to be using, you know, to do readings um on my YouTube channel. So you know, I'm I'm doing all kinds of shit to like plug myself <laughs> and plug these readings, and so I use um, YouTube um, as a another way to reach out to the general public. So anyway, I'm just saying that you know to show you that you know the only difference being you know as far as how I do messages on there is that um, as opposed to on here on the show is uh, there is no intuitive message at the beginning. And uh, there are there's no focus on zodiac signs, you know. On my YouTube channel, I focus on the inner child energy or do inner child readings, inner child energy readings, you know, uh, for each zodiac sign. Um, so by all means, check those out. Before I get started with the actual message, the inner child energy message, I think it's a good idea to talk a little bit about what the inner child is, what we're working with. I talk a little bit about how that energy affects us as adults, but not what it actually is and how it operates as far as, you know, how it affects us and how it communicates with us, right? How our inner child communicates with us. So here it is. The inner child is basically a childlike version of ourselves living within each and every one of us, right? So it's the version that absorbed everything we've learned and experienced from and within our environments and the adults associated with those environments, okay? Let me say that one more again. The inner child 
is a childlike version of ourselves living within each and every one of us. And it's the version that absorbed everything that we've learned. It absorbed all the positive, neg- uh, the positive messages, negative messages that we received. Uh, a lot of the, the, the um, it witnessed a lot of the behaviors, you know, that, you know, the adults displayed, you know, within our environments. So that's what that is. That's what we're working with. Okay. Now, as far as the adults and the people that are in our life, um, like, and I say that, like, in other words, like, yeah, basically, like, the inner child carries everything that we have done or we've experienced, you know, on an unconscious level. And so what happens is this, like, the folks we associate with as kids were, like, be it our parent, our guardian, siblings, teachers, etc., um, those folks shape how we view ourselves, right? So as our child brain like is developing, we absorb we absorb everything. You know that is you know those folks say to us and do to us because um, we don't know any better, right? And so because we trust them, we assume that they're telling the truth because um, we just we just feel like you know these adults are there are teachers there are first teachers so that's all fine and good okay you know as far as the trust issue if those folks were well adjusted and had good intentions for us from the very beginning but that's not the case for childhood trauma survivors many of us were abused you know by folks giving us negative and or conflicting and or conflicting messages and they used everything from their age to their status right to manipulate humiliate and dehumanize us you know as children now most children who've experienced abuse and trauma grow up to be a adults who struggle with life right um we trauma survivors when we don't receive the support required to thrive we end up reenacting all that's happened to us and we don't even know why okay so that's usually because we are unknowingly being driven by the emotions desires and cravings of our inner child outer survival of survival we've ignored them completely we there's a lot of us who intuitively know what's going on but out of survival and out of that fear of facing a lot of our childhood trauma issues we ignore those cries you know of our inner child you know those behaviors you know that we've witnessed as as children you know and now you know, our inner child, as a result of all that, our inner child is basically like acting out and fucking our lives up in some way, shape or form, fucking up our relationships, our employment, um, our, our interaction with other people, you know, how we view ourselves, you know, uh, on an unconscious level, our, our inner child is basically driving our, our actions, right? So that's how it, that's how, um, the inner child operates and that's what the inner child is. Okay. But be that as it may, we survivors are being called to connect to our little one. You know, we're, we're being called to connect to our inner child now. Okay. To do, uh, and to just because like our inner child can only be helped by the one person that won't leave them. And that's us, right? No one is going to do that work for us. No one is going to do that work for us, which is why we are being led to reconnect to and reparent our inner child. And that's a part of our healing. Um, that's a part of our healing for one. And when we heal, uh, we're healing generational and historical trauma, not only, f- you know, you know, from this lifetime, but for many others. Okay. And alternate universes and, you know, different dimensions you know, are playing a huge part in that, okay? And that's like a whole nother episode altogether as far as like how generational and historical trauma and how intersectionality plays a huge part in, you know, how our family tree plays a huge part in the inner child and how the inner child, um, our, 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 I guess our childhood rather, and how that affects us as adults in our inner child, right? Um, and again, this is... This podcast, you know, is a way for me to um, to talk about this, right? 
to it's also another way for me to heal um, myself and to heal others and to repair and to have people or give tools and tips on how people can uh, repair themselves, you know, through spiritual guidance. Me, you know, this podcast, you know, using cards and using spiritual guidance, you know, to do so. So, yeah, this is how this is how we're going to be doing things, right? So I hope that you got something out of that. You know, I didn't mean it for it to go this long as far as like the explanation. Um, but I was led to bring this home and to get deep with y'all from the very beginning. Um, because this is this is the type of energy we're gonna be working with, and that inner child is hurting. And so it's just best to know from the very beginning that this is what we're dealing with here, right? This is what we are gonna be working with, this is what we're gonna be healing. So Speaking of which, let's get started with the inner child messages for this week, the week of September, not September. Now I'm just going, now I'm time traveling. <laughs> uh, 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 December 16th, 2019. So, hey everybody. So we're just going to go ahead and get uh, started with the readings, um, the inner child energy readings. And so I have, like, if I'm shuffling cards or whatnot, um, is pre that's what you're hearing so don't be alarmed or uh, i'm out i will do everything i can to make sure that you are not um irritated by the sound or whatnot so yeah like uh let's go ahead and get started just so you know this is very much a general reading and so if you resonate with it um that's perfectly fine um this and this is basically for the collective and so i definitely put the intention out there that uh, only the folks who are meant to resonate with the message will receive the message and uh, internalize it and so that is what the energy that i'm working with and this is for december 16th 2019 so um i already have some cards pulled up and so um, it's very interesting. So what we received as far as the archetype card is the father. And so there's the light attribute and the shadow attribute. So the light attributes, the light attributes of the father card says, you know, um, there's talent. You, and you have talent for creating and supporting life, positive guiding light within a tribal unit. But I also got the shadow attributes, uh, dictatorial control and abuse of authority. And what I got from this card straight up and flat out is that a lot of you are um, unlearning a lot of the generational trauma and historical trauma that y'all have gone through. Um, a lot of you are basically saying like how I was raised as a child, my child or children will know differently. So this tells me right here that there is a lot of and when I say father, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, um, that it's a, that this person is just a cis male, because in fact, energy is very much genderless. But what I'm also, the energy that I'm receiving from this card is that a lot of y'all are, um, are either, um, males, um, or gender nonconforming or, um, male body individuals. So, um, this definitely goes across the board as far as, um, gender identity, uh, okay, and how one is, uh, how, how they view fatherhood. Um, so basically what I'm getting is that uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of fathers or a lot of parents out there um, that basically st told themselves that I am not going to repeat Okay, I will teach my children differently. I'm not going to repeat anything that my father has done, uh, what my my biological father has done, my stepfather has done, my male guardian has done. Um, I'm just getting there was a lot of in your childhood. Um, you've witnessed a lot, of, and 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 you have not had a voice as a result of what you have witnessed, um, what you have gone through. I'm not getting a uh, corporal punishment uh, for a lot of you, even though that may have happened. What I'm getting for this is um, a lot of verbal, uh, a lot of verbal and emotional and psychological abuse, uh, especially around, around money and around upbringing. And I'm just getting a lot of, 
you you know you having this this idea that you like somehow you're ungrateful for what you have received okay and so there was a, a lot of verbiage and a lot of basically a, a a lot of drama and trauma around you know resources and capitalism and so i'm just getting that you are teaching your children that money cannot buy everything money cannot buy everything and not and money cannot buy love you know just like that Beatles song money can't buy me love it didn't buy you love either um because uh you just feel like this is not there's more to life than materials there's more to life than uh obtaining okay so you pretty much told your your yourself that this is not going to happen. This is not going to roll. Now, as far as the, uh, um, uh, the shadow attributes, you're literally, what I'm getting is that you're you're literally unlearning all that you have been taught. That's where the shadow is. Like that dictatorial, uh, that, that dictatorship that you've gone through and the abuse of authority, you did not, I'm not getting it. You, your, uh, excuse me, and I'm, and, you yourself have not abused authority. I'm having a lot of throat issues right now. So that tells me right now that you did not have the opportunity to speak up when you were a child. You saw a lot of things. You did not have the voice. You were definitely being told to shut up and to sit down. So because of that, you give your children the liberty uh, to voice their opinion, express their emotion, to, to garner enough trust in you to tell you what's going on with them because you did not have that as a child. You literally did a lot of unlearning. Um, I'm just getting that um, something happened in, in your life to to have you switch that paradigm or maybe you've seen a lot of what is going on in your life, uh, in your, so your overall surroundings, and you're like, you just felt like there was more to life than what you were given emotionally as a child so that's what i am getting from the father attribute card as far or the father archetype card yeah a lot of you are now good fathers because you're unlearning a lot of the the um the trauma you've been through i'm just getting you're breaking the cycle and this was a long time coming i'm also getting that you um yeah i'm just getting straight up and flat out that because of what, how you were raised you may not be getting along with your biological people. So um, your family's pretty much chosen. I'm definitely getting, your family's getting, yours very much chosen. So what I have here down on uh, now is uh, outside of the, the archetype card is the, the nine of pentacles. Okay. The nine of pentacles that basically tells me the energy that I'm getting from this card is that you yourself as a child, came from money. You came from money. It would not surprise me at all if you came from a well-to-do family. Um, I'm getting that um, you were very well taken care of financially um, and even to a certain extent emotionally, but basically it's not from anybody in your family. I'm getting um, like a female energy or feminine energy, so it would not surprise me if someone outside the family maybe like, I'm getting a maid or some hired help that was basically like your uh, particular, that person was your, the person you went to for your emotional stuff. Everyone else was actually, I'm just seeing you living in this big home, in this beautiful home, but it feels very cold and empty because of the lack of emotion, you know, expressed by all the people in the house. And you're very, as a child, like you just, you're just very bored with this. You know what I mean? Most children, um, when they come from money, you always have this. There's this assumption that when children come from money, um, they're automatically spoiled or they're automatically, you know, um, they they they're not clueless about life. But for some odd reason, um, is, and I'm thinking this is because of some past life stuff that you felt like as a child there was more to this. There was more to this. Um, to this life than having money. I'm just getting like you're extremely bored and dissatisfied. Um, 
with what is going on around you. It just seems like you have no control of your life whatsoever because everything is scheduled for you. And so what I'm getting from the Nine of Pentacles is that um, you just, I'm just getting like this feeling like you are a very lonely child. You're very lonely. You feel like people are not understanding you. Um, and as a result of that, like you feel like you're out of your element. Okay. You don't, you don't feel like this is a natural state of anything just simply because, um, you yourself, you want more of a connection with people than what you were getting as a child. I'm also getting to that, um, for the most part, like I got the eight of pentacles here and it's upside down. So basically that tells me that, um, as a child, you were just, you were surrounded by people with, um, I'm not getting like a failing business, um, but entrepreneurship and getting into trouble as a result of that entrepreneurship or them not, I'm just, I'm just getting like entrepreneurship was like raining your family and you wanted nothing to do with it. Okay. Like you felt like money for the most part, that's what people loved you for. Um, and you did not get in and I'm just getting like, um, people cared about money so much that they did not care about your emotional state. So as a result of that, I felt like I'm feeling that it's, it's taking over your life. Like it's taking like entrepreneurship and, and money has taken over, you know, people's minds, people's spirits in the home. Okay. And so, yes, there were, I'm getting like, there were uh, some business failures, but what I'm also getting from this card is that it's just like almost everybody just cared about money and finances. Yeah, I just feel like it just took up a lot of energy and time. So I'm getting a lot of overwork, um, overwork, workaholism. I'm getting that the father in your life was very much the, the male guardian in your life, whether it be, you know, um, a cisgendered individual, trans individual, gender nonconforming individual, they were the breadwinner in your life. And not only were they the breadwinner, they were a workaholic. I'm getting they were a workaholic. Their power came from having resources. Their power came from money. And so you, it would not surprise me at all if you rarely saw them. If you rarely seen them, you know, growing up, or if you did, they were, they were, they weren't absent. I'm not getting like a, a loving connection from that card as far as, you know, how you connected with your, with your father or a guardian or a male guardian. What I'm also getting, um, from those, from that card is that you rarely saw them because of their workaholic, workaholism. It's their stuff. It has nothing to do with you. I'm getting that your father or this whoever this male guardian is, they grew up poor. And so they don't want to fall into that cat. They don't want to fall into that trap. Okay. Of, of being impoverished again. So don't be surprised if they don't either, they don't talk about their family, family. They don't talk about their childhood. They don't talk about it. And when they do, it's always about how they lacked things. Okay. They love their parents. You know, they love their people significantly, their biological parents, but they often felt like um, that their upbringing did not, that it wasn't conducive to who they, who they wanted to be. So that's where a lot of the workaholism comes from, like that, that, um, that need to be accomplished and that need to be, or that desire rather to be, um, uh, to to be affluent okay and so um yeah that's where the devil card comes in the devil card is upside or not upside down but it's right side up and so the devil card actually talks about addiction it talks about addiction impulsivity um indulgences overindulgence so what i'm getting is that yeah, it definitely talks about the workaholism and also talks about alcoholism that runs in the family somebody was drinking Someone was drinking very, um, someone was drinking heavily enough 
to or like they're drinking away their unhappiness and you saw this so what i'm getting is that this is basically the female guardian in your life the mother in your life was just pretty much drinking um all the time because uh, she was lonely um whether it be uh, again whether it be a, a cis a, a female a cis woman um a trans woman female body in, bodied individual um they were pretty much drinking a lot okay would not surprise me at all if they stepped uh, stepped outside the marriage because they didn't feel like they were getting enough attention i'm just getting like y'all did not get a love uh, a lot of the love and attention that y'all deserve i'm also getting siblings younger siblings so that tells me right there that uh, more than likely those who resonate with this message um they're the oldest um they're the oldest child so i'm getting and you had all these family dynamics happening. You have two of uh, one parent who's a um, workaholic, another one who is an alcoholic and, and possibly, you know, um, finding love outside of the marriage or finding some sort of attention outside of the marriage. And so you are watching all this unfold and, and um, you're, and on top of that, there's a lot of keeping up of appearances, right? So, Oh, by the way, I'm shuffling cards. <laughs> so if you hear that noise, that's what it is. So um, that's what I'm getting. Okay, that's what I'm getting in a nutshell. Oof. You're, you're going through a lot as a child, um, my sweet listeners. <laughs> you're going on uh, a lot as a child. You went through a lot. Um, so there was just a lot of overindulgence and like a lot of self-medicating, a lot of... It would not surprise me at all. Um, yeah, it's just, I, I kind of feel like there was a lot of keeping up of appearances, like family portraits, um, you know, and, and a lot of fake smiles, you know. But, yeah, the environment that you're in is not a very loving environment, and the only sort of love that y'all received was possibly from the, a hired help, maybe like a nanny or... Uh, a maid you know so that's definitely what i'm getting so what other what else is going on with it with the child what's going on oh. wow that's interesting so uh so what i'm also so what i have here <clears throat> excuse me, is the Eight of Cups. And what's going on with the Eight of Cups is that um, it's usually like the end of a ritual or the end of of something, you know, or coming to terms with something. And so what I'm getting is that, like, someone, like, at around this time, I'm getting that um, someone is getting, a, like, some sort of a divorce Someone's getting a divorce. Something is ending um, in regards to this. So what I am receiving is that more than likely around this time, like your parent, uh, whoever this parent is, is actually getting a divorce. And so it's to the point where the, the marriage uh, has reached ahead. It definitely reached ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm definitely getting like, your parents around this time has hit some sort of wall to the point where I'm assuming that the mother, okay, or the female bodied uh, parent was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm not happy. And so she definitely walked away from the marriage. It was, I mean, it was gone a long time ago and it definitely affected, um, it affected like at least the the I'm getting like for some I'm seeing a blonde haired person, you know, <clears throat> a, little, a little person. So basically, like this is somebody's sister, um, and so she was more affected or they were more affected, right? But you were like at this point, how old were you at this time? She herself was eight, like. Your little sister or your sibling was like seven to eight years old. I'm getting that you were possibly a teen at this time, you know, like or close to that, maybe like nine or ten. Um, that was when this happened. 
Okay. You were definitely, um, you, you saw what was going on and how people were affected and you were not as much as hurt as you were. I'm getting that you listener, you weren't as emotionally affected. You saw that this was a long time coming. You were more upset for everyone else because you know that the, you're not even angry at your mom or your, your female body uh, individual or guardian rather, you weren't angry at them. What I'm getting is that you were more angry at the circumstances. Okay. You were angry at the circumstances. You were angry at the fact that um, you are no longer, you can control this. You can, you cannot control this. You cannot control, you did not see this happen or you didn't see this coming. Okay. You knew and you felt, but you were you weren't you feel as if you were not able to prepare emotionally for what happened. So it's as if like you kept all of your emotions inside. Okay. You and to be honest with you, you wouldn't have been able to say anything anyway, just simply because um you you were your voice was not allowed. You were seen and not heard, and you were off and I'm just getting like you were pretty much criticized. For everything that you've done anyway. Okay. You were pretty much. um, You were just criticized. Everything was wrong. And I'm getting that. It was usually your. Your your, 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 your father. Or your male guardian. Who often felt like. They could um, chip at you. Okay. And chip at you. And there was really nothing you could have done about it. I'm getting the emperor card. I'm getting this. (laughs) um, That when the divorce happened. I'm getting that your father didn't care one way or the other. The only thing he thought about was how much is this was going to cost him, how much is money he had, had to come out of their pocket. Um, and that's why you were like so upset. That's one of the main reasons why you were so upset um, because your father did not care about your well-being. They didn't care about your emotional well-being. And of course they didn't. They were like possibly your main abuser. They were worried about the like how much money is this going to come, um, how much of this is going to come out of my pocket. She's going to want alimony. They're going to want you know some sort of, um, some financial, uh, um, so fin- they want something financially from me. You know what I'm getting? Like, if there was a prenup of any way, shape, or form. That's going to come up eventually. And they're just like worried about the bottom the bottom line. I got the Emperor card here in my hand right now. And this is basically what, it, basically what I'm getting from the Emperor card. The Emperor card is basically like um, um, like a, a basically a dominant figure who is very loving, but also very much of a, could be very much of a domineering uh, spirit or dominating, domineering energy. It's basically like them always thinking about being a leader, always wanting to be a leader, being seen as a leader, being someone being seen with, with respect. Um, and this, and I'm just getting like this father doesn't care one way or the other about his family falling apart. I'm just getting like the energy I'm getting from this card is the, the male guardian saying like, I like, they're just, I'm just getting like someone who's very domineering and just want things their way all the time. And they were like, this is going to cost me. Okay. This is going to cost me. How much is this shit going to cost me? You know, I really don't care about her leaving. She left a long time ago. She's always complaining, but how much, how is this going to affect me? Okay. And so that you have the page of wands here. Um, the page of wands is basically for you saying like, you're listening to this. You see, actually, you see this as an opportunity for you to like see things differently or live a different life. If this means not having your male bodied um, guardian in the house, you know, and, and things changing, your mom being happy or your, uh, your parent being happy, you know, there's no static in, or in the house. Like you see this as a, a, as a, as good news. And this is what the page of wands is saying, right? What I'm getting is that 
you were tired of the abuse a long time ago. You were waiting for your father to leave a long time ago. It just seemed like every time he is in the house or they're in the house, like there's some, there's always some sort of discomfort and you got tired of tiptoeing around. Okay. So that's the, that's why you have no emotional, like whether he goes or not, you're not upset about it because he made you unhappy anyhow. You get me? So that's where the page that's why the page of wands is here. Like you see their divorce. When you hear about it, you see it as a sign that things are going to change for the better. Okay. So yeah, I'm just getting like you are done. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> you have the world card. Okay. That's what uh, that's another thing. Um the world card is basically about seeing your world outside of yourself, seeing the world outside of your circumstances, seeing the world outside of your trauma and your drama. And that's exactly what I'm getting from this as well. You're like, now that dad is gone, what do we do now? Okay. What do we do now? I'm not seeing any sort of financial hardship coming from this divorce. If anything, I see the complete opposite. So you're like, what, what type of life can we have now? Now that he's not here, you know, is mom going to be happy? Is my sister or my sibling going to be happy? You know, how am I going to, you know, connect, you know, to the world after this? Like now there's a better start. There's a better um, way to live. You know what I mean? Like a life without criticism is a life of glory. You know what I mean? So I'm just getting like, I want to say around 11 or 12 at the time. Because of the, I'm just getting the divorce proceedings are very, um, they've dragged on. And so you're like, by the time everything is settled, like truly settled, you're like close to your teenage. So maybe 11 or 12 at this point. So you're like, um, if you, and you've grown a lot too. I'm getting that you've like hit a growth spurt. And so I was wondering why I was like, wait a minute. A lot of you around 11 or 12 hit a growth spurt. So you may be, I'm getting that some of you may have been um, tall for your age, okay? Or maybe mature for your age, but I'm definitely getting some sort of growth spurt. So it may have been physically or spiritually um, or energetically rather. But you're just ready to like have things change and you're like, what is the world going to be like? Also, I'm just getting a lot of, yeah, I'm just getting this sense of relief, this sense of relief. That things are going to change and you don't have to be around your father or you're that that domineering spirit that he has. Okay. Um, but I also got the the king of wands upside down. You're placed in a situation where you're now the main caregiver. Now that it's like the three of you or the few of you, depending on um how big the family is, I'm just getting with the king of wands, you're you feel like even though you you have all these upper opportunities, I'm feeling that you are all, you also feel like you're out of place. Just sim simply because now you don't feel like a child anymore. Okay, now that you are um, you're not uh, exactly the breadwinner of the house, but basically, uh, or very well could be now. Uh, but um, you're placed in a le leadership role. I'm just getting from this that you um the the king of wands is that you feel very inadequate. You feel very inadequate to um you know as, as far as filling that role, you feel like I don't know what to do. You feel like a fish out of water because you've never been placed in that type of situation where you're looking out not only for your siblings but now you're looking out for yourself and now you're looking out for a parent um, who is now going through a lot of stress. So now you're putting yourself in this situation despite how you feel about it to basically like make sure that everyone else is okay so that's why um in later like later on in life i'm just getting like um you you're, you're now unlearning a lot of what you've learned about yourself and in, in, um and your upbringing okay so like you're you're definitely pushing to uh, let your um, to let your childhood be an example of how you are to treat your children, how you, you know, how you want to make sure that they're okay. Okay. Um, okay enough to, to where they're not, you know, having to change their life to be a breadwinner or, or a caregiver in some way, shape or form, like an emotional caregiver.
because that's exactly what happened when your father left home. Okay. So let's see what else. I'm getting to the teenage years now. Like, so how was the viewer affected as a teen? Yeah, the Nine of Cups. What I'm getting from the Nine of Cups here. What I'm getting from the Nine of Cups here is that you have learned um, on, emotional, on an emotional level, like, there is a part of you that is still, of course, of course, like, you feel like you're more mature than everyone else in your age group because they have now gone through what you've been through. There's a lot of silence. There's a lack of emotion here. You are, um, you have somewhat, you somewhat have become stoic, um, and you keep a lot to yourself. I'm just getting like there, uh, the nine of cups is a, you're, you're pretty much, um, doing everything you can to survive emotionally. I'm not getting that. Um, you're seeing a counselor or anything like that. And if you are, you're not talking very much. You're definitely being, um, a teen, um, that, um, you're not rebelling yet. I'm not getting a rebellious streak yet. I'm just getting a uh, leave me alone so I can deal with my emotions. I'm, I'm definitely getting like a, um, or a Virgo or Scorpio energy here where you're about business. You're about doing what you need to do in order to, to survive, but you're also keeping things to yourself. You don't like being vulnerable with people at this point. And, and because you're a teen and you're dealing with a lot of this stuff, that's you're basically, basically dealing with your emotions the best way you know how I really am thinking around 13, 14 at this time. Like as far as, as far as how you are dealing with your emotions, because for one, your mom is still going through stuff. Um, she is like, I, I'm just getting like a, a, a woman who is just, or, or, or someone rather a person who was very just easily distressed. <laughs> you know, she's very stressed about things. They're very distressed. You feel like you had to take care of her emotionally on a regular basis um, because you feel like you stepped up as a leader, you know, of the family um, and unnecessarily so. Um, and you just feel as if, like, if you do not, you, you are to keep it together for her. You're to keep it together for her, for that particular parent uh, who is now raising you, Okay. At this point, I'm not seeing a father in your life. Yeah, you got the four of swords here. What else do you got? Yeah. So how is the listener affected as a teen? How are they as a teenager? All right. Yeah, I'm definitely getting like a lot of strategizing, overthinking, um, strategizing, very overthinking, very much of an overthinker, always thinking about uh, other people, but not yourself. Um, I'm just getting like a, the four of swords here, like something like you're like this, this whole thing of just disappointment. So it's like you, like things are coming to an end. Um, I'm just getting like, like someone who was always like, you're just, internalizing a lot of what you are going through. Um, someone who is not asking for help. You wanted to, you want to escape, but feel as if you cannot. Um, I'm getting that, uh, if you have friends, but you keep up a front, um, uh, I'm just getting that, um, you are because of your upbringing, you're keeping up appearances but it's as if you're, it's like you're about to implode. Like you have a smile on your face, but deep down inside, you're about to go off. Okay. That's what I'm getting. 
Okay, you're about to go off. And you don't know what to do with those feelings whatsoever. So, um, ooh, yeah, I'm just getting a lot of overthinking. So, so the Four of Cups talks about overthinking. It talks about overextending yourself. Always thinking of you're constantly in your own head. Okay, um, because of this lack of support when it comes to your own feelings. When it comes to how you're feeling, and when how it um, when it comes to how you're doing, I'm just getting like, um, yeah, like there's a part of you that's just like I'm about to have <laughs> this emotional breakdown, and you don't know how to, you don't you don't know how to navigate those situations. You, for some odd reason, I'm getting that you are very much against opening up to, which I'm just getting like opening up to a therapist or opening up to someone outside of the family. Cause you feel like you've been given a lot of opportunities to do so, but yeah, like yeah, I'm just, I'm just getting straight up and flat out. Like you are just, you're given like the opportunities to do so, but you feel like um, these adults don't understand where you're coming from. What are they going to do? Like, I feel like you feel, I feel that you, I'm getting that you feel that many of the adults in your, in your life um, or, or um, a therapist will, they would not be able to relate to what you're do- what you're going through. Okay. You feel very weird about like talking to somebody. Very strange about talking to somebody. Like, you're not here for it, <laughs> basically. You're just not here for it. You're not, and it's very understandable, too, because, like, around this age, you really do feel like you have so much on your plate. Okay. Yeah, you're just withdrawing to yourself. You're just like, this is your way of withdrawing. You're very much in your head. And it's, and you have the Seven of Swords upside down. That tells me right there, like, whatever you're trying to do or, like, um, as far as, like, keeping things to yourself, this is when it's, it starts to unravel. The Seven of Swords basically tells me that um, you sneaking around and pretending you can do everything as you possibly can is beginning to unravel. Why is it unraveling, Spirit? I'm getting an emotional breakdown. Um, you had an emotional breakdown to where, like, I'm getting a lot of yelling and screaming. Um, I'm getting that you're now lashing out emotionally. You're just, you're pretty much like, like I'm hearing you yelling at people. You're yelling at people. And now it's, it's, it's pretty much come to your head. I'm thinking, thinking like, I'm getting 17, 18. No, I'm sorry. How old was uh, this person when they started doing this? I'm getting uh, 17 years old, 17 to 19 is when you start to have like, it's like, like this emotional breakdown It's simply because it has now come to a head. Okay. Like this is the time for you to now start talking to people. So I'm wondering whether or not, yeah, you're just snapping. You're snapping at people. It would not surprise me if you start swinging on people. Okay, you weren't. You're definitely not much of a fighter as far as physical physical fighting, but you are not afraid to take it there either if pushed enough. So someone or said someone or something set you off, um, to the point where you are now becoming almost physically violent and but uh, towards people, but you're also very verbal. Yeah, a lot of your you got the strength card upside down, so that tells me right there. That your emotional state is very much out of control at this point. Is very you're very much it's very much out of control. What I'm getting is that you're now going into drinking yourself. Um, I'm also getting like you also starting to slip into an addiction, just simply because you are not. Um, there's like an emotional regulate ill regulation. Okay, like you are so used to being stoic, you're so used to being your own person that now the strength card has come up 
and 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 underage drinking happen. There's a lot of untamed behavior, and so I am not surprised if you started just drinking, smoking weed, or doing some sort of drug to medicate yourself or to quiet your mind. It would not surprise me at all if you start developing mental health issues as a result. This is like the onset of your, you know, as a result of your behavior, because you have been told that um, your your voice is not to be heard. So what's going on? Ooh. Yeah, you have got a lot going on. So how was our listener affected as an adult? How are you affected as an adult? Yeah. As an adult, you <laughs> you are now you're fighting everybody. You're fighting you're just now you're just going off and yeah. Ooh, Lord. Hmm. Okay. So, okay. Excuse me. So what I got here for, as far as you being an adult and how you are, how your inner child is, is lashing out as, uh, as a result of you not talking is five of swords. The five of swords is basically someone who is fighting, um, a a one-sided battle. Okay, someone who was ready to go off at the drop of a dime, um, someone who was always in conflict. In fact, this would be the uh, I see this as like a bit of the conflict conflict card if I was like using the dreams of the Gaia deck. Um, so basically, what you're doing is that like you are just uh, going off on everybody to the point where there's a lot of distrust, there's a lot of uh dishonor, or you feel like someone's about to dishonor you. Um, you, and what's happening is that you're pushing people away as a result of what's happening. Okay. It's my, when, in terms of your behavior, you're pushing a lot of folks away. Okay. This is in your, like your early twenties, early to mid twenties. Um, throughout the entire period, a lot of your behavior is like, you are just picking fights with people, um, just to, to feel something at this point. Um, you just feel but you often feel like someone is not taking your voice seriously, your concerns seriously. And as a result, like you don't, it would not surprise me if you did not have a lot of friends or if you did, you push them away or they can only take you in small doses. Um, because you're just so like, there's a, there's a fire within you that has, that is to be, there's you're not grounded and so basically you're just walking around angry all the time and people can people can only take so much of that um and i'm also getting that that same like fight um it made you paranoid so that's why you got the nine of wands the nine of wands excuse me the nine of wands and so what ends up happening is that now you feel like you have to protect yourself all the time. You have to protect yourself all the time. You have to protect your energy all the time. You're very protective of who uh, you're very, uh, when it comes to other people being in your life, you're very protective of, the, of them, of your of their energy, but you're also protective of your own. You don't let people get close to you. I'm definitely getting at this point in your 20s. You're not letting people get close to you. Um and you're just like, I'm just getting like, this, this is your dark period. Like you're a while on out because this is your dark period, right? It, whew, okay. Like you are just going out and just snapping on people. Like you, it's as if like you pick fights and it's like it reenacts. You're reenacting your childhood right now where you're waiting for someone to emotionally walk away from you. Because that's what you're used to. You're used to people walking away from you so they don't have to deal with your emotions. Like you're, you're, you're expecting someone to leave you at this point. And so you have the seven of wands. You have the seven of wands. This basically is about um, looking into the future, looking into and, and making changes at this point in time. I'm getting that deep down, you know, that you are to make changes to your behavior. You are to make changes and you're, you're literally at this point in your life, I'm saying like maybe, yeah, like this is like, you had like kernels of hope, 
like in your late teens, early twenties. Okay. Like there was something that has to give, there's something better. What do I do now? Okay. So in this, I want to say, um, but it was always buried, you know, beneath all of what was going on within you. So I'm getting like, you got the seven of wands here as an adult, because I'm getting that there's still a part of you. There's still a part of you that's like, there has to be something better than this. What, what am I doing? What do I do next? You know, who else is going to, I'm also getting like the, the, for you as a cash 22 is like, who else is going to leave me? Who else is going to leave me? But at the same time, what am I doing? And what can I do to stop this behavior? Okay. You know, so this is one of the reasons why you got the justice card. The justice card is basically about, um, usually about someone else, you know, um, and, and justice served, you know, but what I'm getting is that, um, for this card, you got the justice card. This is about you doing yourself a great justice. Okay. This is, I'm still getting like, um, at this point it's early thirties. You now st are starting to realize, in fact, the seven of wands, it does not surprise me because now this behavior I'm getting is starting to wane out. So uh, the the justice card is basically saying like, look, take care of yourself and do yourself a favor, favor and start doing the work necessary in order to grow as a person. To start putting that anger, you know, where it's supposed to be. And that is on the lap of your, your male, in the, your male guardian, because they are the ones who, you know, put you in this state of, you know, of feeling as if you had to prove yourself to someone or in order for someone in, or, in order for someone to, to not love you, um, they are to, or to, to push you away somehow. Like they're, you're usually, you're, like I said before, is because of the emotional detachment that, you know, you went through, you know, as a, as a, uh, as a child, you know, because you did not get that love and that attention um, that you wanted to receive. I'm just getting that, um, put that anger into that, like towards that relationship or that lack thereof or lack thereof, you know, that your father or your, um, that your father and your guardian has displayed towards you. Like that's where it's supposed to be. So I'm just getting for this card. Like this is the time for you to, to basically like do yourself a favor and, and, and get help. Right. Um, and last but not least, as far as your adult trajectory, um, you got the moon card. Okay. Yeah. You're being told to let this stuff go. You're basically being told to let this stuff go on a subconscious level to dig deep into your subconscious level and basically start listening to your inner child and to, and to basically talk about, you know, to see basically to, to seek therapy, to seek therapy. Um, and there are many ways you can seek therapy um, or maybe go to a spiritual advisor, but basically like use a combination of both to really start doing some inner child energy work around um, th this 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 fear of getting close to people or this fear the or this this thought that you are unlovable um to the point of you pushing people away okay so i'm just getting like it's time for you to let that stuff go to let it go and not to and to to really start digging deep really start digging deep because your inner child is basically acting out by pushing people away and reenacting um that 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 loop that you're unlovable that you are not that you yourself you you are not you know worth the time and effort okay so what can the clients do to honor their inner child what can they do to honor the inner child? Yeah, a lot of you are... Yeah, like 2020 is coming up, y'all. <laughs> it's time for y'all to... Whatever father issues that we all have, 
it's time for us to examine it and put it, you know, put that anger or put whatever's going on in this rightful place. All right, so what can the listener do to, to honor the inner child? What I got here, mm, what I got here is the Eight of Wands upside down. And the card I got here, um, as far as how what you can do to honor your inner child, for one, not to run away from their hurt. The inner the Eight of Wands is basically about full steam ahead, you know, getting a, like going towards a, a goal, going towards the next task, whatever it is. But what I'm getting from this card, because it's upside down. Basically, it's not for you to basically honor your feelings and honor the feelings of your inner child by basically allowing yourself. Allowing yourself, okay, to feel. To let that child be heard. To let that child um, be known, their feelings to be known, okay? Because it was they were not able to hear, you know, their, them, they weren't able to be heard. Okay, or to hear, you know, those words, I love you, I'm proud of you, you're the apple of my eye, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Y'all never, your inner child did not hear that. So this is the time for for you, listener, okay, especially those who are, are fathers or fathers-to-be, you are to basically tell yourself or tell your inner child, I'm here for you. And the best way to do that is to write a letter to your inner child, do a meditation, um, uh, 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 inner child in meditation and allow, and imagine your, and to imagine yourself, you know, sitting next to your, the, your, the childlike version of yourself and say, saying like, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you, whatever you have to say. Let's talk about it right now. It doesn't have to be a one day thing or a one time thing. It's definitely like something for you to do over time. And basically like, you know, talk about what happened and to let that and give that, that inner child a safe space. You're the only one who can do it. You're the only one. Okay. So you also have the Nine of Swords here. And the Nine of Swords is basically saying that this is time for you to, to allow yourself to grieve. Allow yourself to grieve. Allow yourself to cry. Allow yourself to feel all of your emotions. Allow your inner child to feel their emotions, but not to the point where they are destructive. For And before I even go any further... You are to set boundaries with your inner child because for years they have been ruined and like wrecking your life in some way, shape, or form simply they because they weren't heard. So basically, you're also to tell your child that your inner child that it's okay for you to grieve, but it's not okay for um it's not okay for your inner child to wreck your life. Okay. There are just like with any parent. You are you are to set boundaries with your inner child, okay? And so, one way to tell them to set those boundaries um, is to tell them it's okay for you to feel, it's okay for you to grieve, it's okay for you to cry for your father or for that parent you felt like for those parents that were not there for you. It's okay for you to be angry. It's okay for you to do that. Let's find some ways. For you to express your anger, but we're not going to do this, that, and the other. We're not going to do this, 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 this. Set those boundaries, okay? But for the most part, you're being told to allow yourself to grieve, allow your inner child to grieve, and allow yourself to grieve that lost childhood that you had, okay? And to basically um, create... um, another a whole new childhood for yourself okay create that for yourself all right so now we got since we got all that out the way (laughs) um let's talk about the words of encouragement so dear spirit 
What words of encouragement do you have for our listeners who are fathers? What words of encouragement do you have? Ooh, there you go. So basically, you got the child upside down. Okay, and just because it's upside down doesn't mean it's negative, right? So the words of encouragement I'm getting from this is that let your inner child be heard. They're just as important as you are. They're just as important as the trauma. They're just as important. It's 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 now the time for you to allow yourself to heal. To heal that inner child, to hear what they have to say, to hear their emotions, to feel their emotions, allow them to 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 basically have a say so without them causing any sort of drama in your life, okay? Allow them to say and tell their own story. L- allow them to be reparented by you, okay? So they're not emotionally struggling anymore. Let them know that whenever, you know, um, they are feeling something or they're angry about something, that they have the liberty to speak to you. And they have the liberty to talk to you and that they're safe with you. But your inner child is waiting to be heard because they are a whole nother energy that deserves, that pretty much deserves love and admiration because they were a strong kid. Allow them, please allow them to have a voice. So that is all. I have for this week's episode. In fact, that's all for this week's episode of the Inner Child Collective. If you res- resonated with that message in any way, shape, or form, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast here on Anchor. Uh, leave a review. You can actually leave a voice message and um, share it with your friends. You know, um, you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, I'm known as the Bowtie Psychic on Instagram.